On smirking views, there's usually some swearing, so if you can't handle some swearing, well, maybe you shouldn't watch this video. Have a good day. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews. Here, here to talk more about the terror. We're on episode two. It is called Gore. And so full spoilers if you haven't seen this episode yet. Um, yeah, this is was a misleading title. <laughs> I thought it was going to be gory, but I guess there was some in there. Um, if you count uh, the bullet, them trying to take the bullet out of the Inuit guy and uh, when they showed the bear attacking him. That was all kind of mild. I didn't know that the, the, that the lieutenant's name was Gore. Uh, so that's what this is all about, what happened to him. And so <laughs> I was a little bit disappointed in the title not being as accurate to what I wanted. But it was still a really good episode because we get a, you know, a lot more in-depth with the characters and their backgrounds in this. And, th and, and we get to see more of like what's gone on and, and, and the amount of time it's taken place. I was uh, commenting, uh, one of the commenters, Jen, put in there that she was watching this, but the isolation was like, uh, you know, a lot to, to take in. And, and uh, that's what I'm using to watch this is like my fear of isolation and, and trying to put myself in their shoes. And even though it makes me more scared while I watch it, thinking about it, it also makes me it makes the episode more uh, like I can really get immersed in it, and I don't know if that's healthy, <laughs> but that's what I'm doing um, because it's really making it effective. And I do find this kind of stuff. This is what scares me, not you know Jason and Freddy and horror movies and Godzillas and whatever. It's this kind of thing. This kind of thing really scares me. That's one of the reasons why John Carpenter's The Thing is one of my favorite movies. Because being out in the middle of Antarctic and not knowing who to trust, I'll just switch Antarctic for Arctic and, and minus the alien. And yeah, this is how I would feel. And so we get caught up here and it's now spring in 1847. So they've been gone a long time and nobody even knows what's going on. They, you know, I'm sure that there are people kind of freaking out, but they're professionals and I got to give it up to them. I mean, they don't seem to have panicked yet and you might have to chalk that up to their leadership. Um, but being out there all that time, oh my God. And so it's been eight months since the first episode's events of the first episode. And now they're stuck. And I put this here because now they're sending out groups to try to find leads to, through to see if there's any kind of way that shows that the ice is thawing. And what I love this scene because here they are talking about it. They're all chipper. They're all upbeat. They're going to do it. They're going to get out. It's going to be fine. They asked Jared Harris to say something. He just says, travel well. Because really, there's, after those two guys made it all sound like for God and country, he just goes, look, man, you know, like, be careful. <laughs> and then, you know, they go out, and then when they pan up, and we get to see what they don't, which is, there ain't nothing. <laughs> There's nothing. And so, you know, just knowing even more how screwed they all are, and it just, like, makes you just kind of go, oh. And, yeah, maybe it is a bit depressing, but... I don't, I just, the journey, I, I just, I'm fascinated by this kind of stuff. So whatever that says about me, I don't know. But uh, Lieutenant Gore is one of the people that goes on this journey. And um, so let's, but let's cover the, yeah, let's kind of talk about their journey. So they're out there. You got Good Sir, who's like the assistant doctor. Um, they go out and they find like that the ice has hit like, met the the land basically the the king the new king land or whatever they're calling it um and so the ice is like way been pushed up as it's hit you know basically rock the same stuff that they buried the other guy in and they get up to the top and they're all happy because it's no more ice but i mean it's still it's like ice desert rock desert either way there's nothing there really and it's just <laughs> I guess if you were just looking at ice all day, maybe you'd feel a little more happy because it's land, technically. But, uh, I mean, to me, land is earth, not rock. But, whatever. 
So that's also, this is also where they find the, I want to call it almost like a lighthouse, you know, like a kind of thing where other explorers have piled up the rocks and they leave messages for each other. And uh, I think that's really interesting. I really, that's really cool. Um, also, the, like what the one guy mentions, Goodsir says, like, it's hard to imagine anybody being out here, like, ever. <laughs> and he's not wrong. He is not wrong. But I'm not exactly sure what they were putting in there because, I mean, I guess it's just updates, almost like a time capsule, right? So they're just, the next people who read it will be some other explorers, they say. Um, and they're just so, again, you got to give it to the British Navy. These guys are some hard dudes because they're just, they, they could be hiding their, you know, they're hiding their anxiety and their and their fear pretty well. I mean, they must be really well trained. You know, I don't know if I could do it. I mean, I guess the camaraderie of the, your fellow man and knowing you're not alone in it is something. Um, but the lieutenant takes off with another guy and the rest of them go back to the to where they left their stuff that they'd put in one of the lifeboats, which they find flipped over. Now, they think it's a bear. Well, I mean, I in my book, a bear would have tore the fuck out of that place. It wouldn't just be, you know, knocked over and a couple of things shuffled around. Like, I think it really would have been a mess, even if it wasn't, like, clawed up or anything. I think things would have been ripped and teared. Um, and so what, another part about this that... You know, they don't really say what did it, right? Because you can assume that from later on, well, we'll get, we'll talk about that then. The lieutenant ends up coming back and then the fucking hail comes. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like if things couldn't get bad enough. You know, there was that storm that uh, the, the ship that uh, Joseph... Francis sees on the horizon. I'm pretty sure that that's what's hitting them right here. And that's the freaking golf ball size hail that is now raining on them as they hide in their tent. And that's when they hear the growling. So <laughs> now there's growling. And so, you know, they, they think it's a polar bear and they go out there and they've all got their guns. And it, this is really effective, by the way, if you're, if you're watching this, like... They see movement up at the top of the ice, and they shoot it, and it turns out to be uh, an Inuit man, or in, yeah, an Inuit guy, and or whatever tribe. I'm trying not to be culturally insensitive by just being like Eskimos, or you know what I mean. So, one of the natives of the area is there with like his daughter, and they shot him. And so, not, you know, they know it wasn't a bear that was doing that. But when Good Sir goes to <laughs> go back. <laughs> The leader, their leader, Gore, is killed by a great big goddamn polar bear. <laughs> and it was scary seeing that from a distance and the dark and the flashing and you just see this thing go up to the guy. I mean, oh, woof. Like just, again, I, I allowed myself to just really get immersed in this and it's effective as heck. Um, so he dead. Now, meanwhile... On the boat, uh, Frank Franklin, Joseph, Fra yeah, it's hard to get these guys' names because they're all like JFs and stuff, but the, the head guy played by Syrian Hines, he wants, uh, after seeing Jared Harris kind of give like a very humdrum speech in his opinion on the ice, he wants them to be friends again. And he even goes so far as to be like, will it help to admit that I made a mistake? What I love about this is that we think they're talking about the mistake that he made by going through with the journey. And maybe there is part of that there. But when he doesn't respond in kind, you know, like, oh, yes, that's fine. Like, I'm doing my duty. You've never lost my friendship. But that wasn't good enough for him. And he kind of huffs out. And what I love is that when we see later, it was him that made the other guy feel bad and you can oh my god like you could cut the tension with a knife you could hear a pin drop when they're having dinner and he tells his niece i guess it's his niece i think that he wanted you know jared harris's character wanted to marry her and apparently he keeps proposing and she's not shutting him down because apparently this has been going on for a long time 
just kind of leading him on. And they finally are telling him, like, you can't keep doing this. You're not a kid, you know, and that he may be fit for many women, but not under our banner. And he's standing there listening to it, and they all see him, and I was just like, oh, fuck. Like, no wonder he's pissed off, because this guy basically, you know, just told him he's not good enough. You know, he can be an explorer. He can have hope, uh, that, that whole part about him being an explorer and it, making him hopeful. And you're, this hopefulness that he keeps, you have to dash down because of how he is. And it's like, he is the same way, too. But he's like, not under our banner. And you find out later that not only was it just like you think, oh, he's not good enough. You find out why he wasn't good enough. It's because he's Irish. And that's just, again, it's another layer of like the stuff that they're all holding on the inside. And it's just like I didn't expect to get that level of insight into the characters in this. And I'm really happy with that because this could just be, you know, just a bunch of guys, whatever. Um and you, you know that Jared Harris's character has a sense of humor when he's talking to the other guy from his boat, you know, that they are reminiscing and talking about things. And even talking about the ice, which was funny because we were talking about, uh, a, there was a, having a conversation while watching it, like what would the ice do to these boats? And that, in that very scene, they talk about how it could shove them up or bring them down or snap them in half. And it's just, I know he's giving us exposition that is not making you feel any better, but again... Nobody really found these guys, right? I mean, nothing. Nobody was found alive. Um, another weird little side part that I guess they needed to put in there was the two guys that were caught screwing around. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess after a long time, some guys would resort to whatever to take care of their, uh, you know, their manly needs, their biological imperatives, if you will. Um, <laughs> And the whole thing about they're not af the guy's not afraid that the guy's going to tell on him because then he'd have to open his imagination to what he didn't see. It's just really well said about <laughs> a, guy, a guy catching a couple of guys having sex and why he won't tattle uh, <laughs> is in there. Um, but then uh, in this, they finally, the group that got attacked comes back to the boat and they have to explain like what happened and one guy wants to save the Inuit but the other guy the head doctor doesn't want to save him at all doesn't want to touch him now I don't know if that's because he's being racist or if it's because he thinks that this guy is involved in the death of their lieutenant maybe column A maybe column B but the other interesting thing about this was when their the captain fails and is sitting off to the side because he can't I'm assuming can't handle it and it kind of shows more about his character, unless there's more going on here, which I do believe is. Because when they talk about after he dies, um, and the, the Inuit girl that's, you know, I like that whole thing where she doesn't understand what's happening at first until uh, Joseph uh, explains to her, you know, in, in her language. So we know that he understands this, this girl. Um, that he needs to die on the ice, and if he can't get there, you know, his his spirits, the spirits that they follow, probably wouldn't be able to find him and take him to their afterlife or whatever story they got to tell themselves. Um, but when they talk about that after he died, he, that he had previous surgery done to his tongue and that had been cut out. And both Heinz and uh, Harris both get a really like kind of awkward look in their eyes like they know what that means. I don't know, I'm assuming, maybe I'm hoping that that'll pay off in some way down the road, but it does seem to be about something else. Um, and they've both been out there before, right? Something happened when they've been out in this area before, and maybe they ended up, like, since it was 17 years ago or so, maybe they knew this man in another time. That's what I'm thinking. But... Then uh, Harris goes back to his boat, which is a long way off now. And I don't know if that's because the ice is pushing it away or maybe it's just perspective. Maybe I'm just seeing it wrong. But uh, he goes back out there to talk to her and she tells them that if they don't leave now, they will disappear. And then she does this like that. And I, I believe that that's her somehow saying like that they basically some spirit would throw them to the wind like like nothing 
And that's the way the episode ends. And I, again, just fantastic. I'm loving this show. I'm loving the atmosphere. I'm loving the writing. I'm loving the acting. There's an, and it is effectively scary. And just, I, I, it's not like, you know, horror movie scary to me. It's just general scary. Like being in a position of survival, it really, I really feel it. And I don't know if anybody else feels the same way, but keep it up show. So we'll be back with episode three, probably tomorrow. Um, so if you liked this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that rig and roll. If you feel like contributing to the channel, the descriptions are down below. Um, otherwise, this is Robert Smirking on Review saying we'll be back uh, tomorrow with more of this. Otherwise, you can look out for more good omens we're doing. Uh, we're also, I'm starting to read uh, Leviathan Wakes, the first Expanse book, so we'll be reviewing that eventually. We got regular uh, stuff coming up all the time on the channel. Handmaid's Tale is this weekend. And uh, yeah, we're, <laughs> there's just a lot going on. It's been a long day, so have a great night. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.